So anyone who keeps up with entertainment news has probably heard that Disney Plus was removing a lot of content from its service in order to cut costs. I don't know how much of that gets them tax breaks versus how much they save by not having to pay residuals. I'm not a corporate entertainment guy. Upon hearing this news, I knew I had only enough time to get through maybe one show, if even that. So I picked Willow, despite not hearing a lot of good things about this show from critics. Well, the deal is done and the shows are gone, and I didn't even get to finish Willow. I got about five episodes in and I am left with the series being unresolved. Now, I know a lot of people will be naysaying. I saw some comments about the situation such as the new Willow series belongs in the trash anyway and stuff akin to that. But first of all, it's pretty disrespectful to the talent on board to just discard their work and make it completely inaccessible in any legal form. How about actors who want the work to boost their profiles? There is no one in the industry who could definitively say that every single project they work on was great or even good. Amazing actors have been in bad movies. And in the case of Willow, there were a lot of young actors who were just starting their careers and really needed that high-profile project to boost them up, you know, like a Disney Plus Lucasfilm original. But also, while I can't speak for the quality of the other shows that were taken down, I actually didn't think Willow was that bad. It's not perfect, but hey, have you watched the original Willow recently? It's absolutely not a perfect film either. When I was a kid, I went to a friend's birthday party and I watched Willow for the first time and it was really awesome. I loved the fantasy setting and the swashbuckling and everything. It was a magical memory from my youth and that'll always be there. But I also rewatched it as an adult and it just doesn't hold up the way it did before. I still like it, but I didn't love it. But go figure, I love a kid's film as a kid more than as an adult. And I got the same vibe from the new series. It's, a, it's for a younger demographic than the Rings of Power and the Dragons and Boobs show. Kids need some fantasy for them as well, and Willow filled that gap. Again, it's not a masterpiece. I found the visual narrative to be occasionally confusing, leading me to wonder how one scene moved to the next, which implies to me a rushed production schedule. Also, the dialogue seemed a bit too modern at times, and occasionally felt like early draft chatter, which is easily fixed with maybe just one more pass at the screenplay. But these problems were forgivable because the actors were committed to their roles and every character had personal stakes and story arcs. It had its own identity from the movie and didn't just feel like a shameless nostalgia play most of the time. The foundation elements of a good show were intact. It just needed a bit more spit and polish to fully stick the landing. Not that there was any good time for them to pull this move, but I think that the timing was particularly bad this time around because um, maybe it should go without saying that you can see how it's problematic for them to cancel a TV series so they don't have to pay their talent anymore when we're right in the middle of several talent strikes from people who work very hard to bring you those mandated projects. It really feels like you're throwing them under the bus. I would be generous to call this tone deaf, but it feels more like a I don't give a flying fox what you guys want or need. If this wasn't already, you better believe this will be a talking point between the talent and producers now. Maybe there'll be demands for a minimum streaming period for exclusive content deals or something like that. I'm sure something is on the table now. But also, this isn't a good thing for the Disney Plus service as a whole since it breeds distrust in the service. Could your favorite show be next on the chopping block? Part of the appeal of the streaming services over classic television is that you can watch at your own pace. Maybe you're not the kind of person who's on top of new shows, but want to watch casually when you're able to. These people exist. And there's another audience member, the kind who watch their favorite shows on repeat. There's a reason that The Office and Friends are such hot properties that streaming services bid on them. People want to watch them over and over. I'm sure that some people are choosing to watch those shows for the first time, but most viewers are there for the comfort of the familiar. Willow could have been that show for someone, we don't know. It was barely given any time to find its audience. Now Disney Plus is just a use it or lose it service with its own needs put ahead of the consumers. And sure, Netflix, the template setter of the streaming wars has been like that too, but only with the content that they don't own and have to pay fees to keep. But also, before they remove a show or movie, they give you plenty of notice. I didn't even get a week between the announcement of Willow ending and it being pulled off the service. There was no mention of a date or time, but I had hoped I'd have at least enough time to watch it with an episode or two per day before it was gone. And sure, you can say, well, this is how it was in the days back of classic TV. 
Shows were canceled and pulled off the air all the time, and, and, and yeah, it's true. Some of these shows were pretty awful, I'm sure, but also there were some that were real gems lost and talent on board who didn't get the break that they wanted because those shows were buried. Just because it was a standard practice in the past doesn't mean it was a good thing that happened. I still remember when my family were a Nielsen family and contributed to the TV ratings. We were watching a show called Jake 2.0. It was a fun show about some robotically enhanced dude or something like that, and my stepdad in particular really enjoyed it. When it was announced that the show was cancelled after not even a full season, he was so mad he pulled us out of Nielsen since it seemed like we just really weren't making a difference in any way. But hey, at least you can still find the episodes that were created on DVD. It wasn't buried, they still chose to make money off of what was made after the fact. I mean, why not, right? Similarly, if we go back much further to the earlier days of television, just ask any classic Doctor Who fan how tragic it is that whole seasons of the early days of the show were just destroyed. There have been extensive efforts to find and preserve what is out there, but still so much is just gone. Back in the 60s, the BBC didn't understand the significance that the show would have years down the road, so they just made room in their storage facilities and threw out Doctor Who like it was garbage. And that's just a show that people happen to care about today. Imagine how many other shows that they got rid of that no one really remembers. Imagine how much talent and work went into those hours of television and were just thrown out. Again, I'm sure some of it was just trash, but we won't know how much of it was somebody's favorite show or was really meaningful to them. The point is, is that it was all discarded without prejudice and now is when people care and are paying the price. This isn't about the quality of the films, nor is it about me not being able to finish a show I started. This is about film preservation. With every upgrade, whether it be from VHS to DVD, or records to CDs, DVDs to Blu-rays, some art is lost in the shuffle and doesn't make the upgrade, making it more and more difficult for the next generation to experience these things. And I feel that the quote-unquote upgrade to streaming will bring about the biggest loss of film media because the consumer has so little say as to what content stays and what doesn't. Seems like the only way Netflix will even finish making a series if it happens to be a huge cultural phenomenon. And now, Paramount Plus is also removing content to save a buck or two, removing shows like The Rise of the Pink Ladies. Again, I wasn't really interested in that show, but the people who made it deserve to have it out there so someone who is interested could watch it. And they're also canceling and pulling down Star Trek Prodigy, which is a move I just cannot get behind at all. So what's the solution? Going forward, I think they should, in general, just make better shows and keep them on the service. Spend wiser and figure out what people want to watch. Don't be so rushed. Time crunches are the killers of quality. And if a show is quality, you can confidently court it to its right audience. As for the shows they've already taken down, if they really don't want to pay up for having it on their service, they could release a physical release, maybe in limited quantities, see how it sells. I know that physical media is a shrinking market, but there are still collectors who might be interested in that kind of thing. The market is still there, especially if streaming services continue to do things like this. Or how about letting another streaming service pick it up? I'm sure Netflix wouldn't mind playing it. I know they're in direct competition, but Disney is choosing not to play it on Disney+. Plus. It's not like they would just give the series to Netflix. That was the market when Netflix started. It would buy the licensing fees to play the content for X amount of time. Maybe in X amount of time, Willow could find its audience there and Disney could make some of their money back from the production costs. That used to be a healthy market for legacy content from studios. They would just rent out the shows and movies to Netflix for viewing and boom, there's another paycheck for the studio and any talent who got a cut from the profits. It was a healthy and thriving part of the market before every studio decided that they wanted those sweet, sweet streaming profits and then flooded the market with streaming services and loads and loads of original exclusive content. So now everyone is dumping money into new shows and not making the money back by selling the rights to play it. It's no wonder Max and Disney Plus are finding this venture extremely costly. But hey, if Willow becomes a hit somewhere else, they can just play it on Disney Plus again after its time with that other streaming service expires. I just can't see the benefit of having the show just sitting on a hard drive somewhere. That just looks like money wasted. So ultimately, I'll be fine. I'll find a way to get closure. And again, I didn't love Willow, but I liked it. I liked it enough that I wanted to see it through. Maybe it just craps the bed in the end. I don't know yet. 
but it did bring me back to that birthday party over two decades ago where I was enchanted by a fantasy movie. And I imagine there's some kid out there who had a personal experience with this new Willow show and it enchanted them. But if they wanted to revisit that feeling anytime down the road, that isn't possible anymore. That option is gone. And it's because of a cynical cost-saving measure. And there's something really sad about that. Also, maybe Disney Plus should bring it back because it has a same-sex romance in it, and that'll make Ron DeSantis mad. And for me, that alone is worth it. <laughs>